Hello people, this is Avnish Tiwari, Faculty St. Peter's Law Academy, Delhi. Uh, today in this video, we are going to discuss a very, you know, leading judgment, which is very recent one also, by the Honorable Supreme Court of India. You know? And that judgment is pertaining to, you know, a very burning issue. And that issue is regarding the reservation to economically weaker sections of citizens, you know. And in short, we know it by, you know, EWS. So this EWS reservation, its constitutional validity, etc., its history and its current position. These issues will be covered with the help of one judgment of the Supreme Court and that judgment was given in this case. This is the title of the case. Title of the case is, you know, like this. Janit Avyan versus Union of India, right. So before starting this case, I think we must be having something in background, you know, something in advance so that we can understand the issues raised in this case, right. So what will be that background? That background is coming from, you know, two articles basically. Article 15, Article 15 of the Constitution, Article 15 and Article 16. And why these two articles are important? When we go through the history of this legal development on EWS, then we find that the Parliament of India in 2019 brought one amendment to the Constitution. And that amendment is 103rd Amendment of the Constitution. 103rd Amendment Act 2019. So the Parliament of India brought this amendment and through this amendment the reservation was you know granted to EWS citizens. You know. So one clause was added to article 15 and one clause was added under article 16. So what was that clause? Clause 6. We know that under Article 15, already there were so many, you know, clauses like 1 to 5. So, this 6th clause was added. Similarly, under this article, clause 6 was added. And we know that these two articles need to be understood. If anybody is willing to understand the real idea of EWS, one should know about these articles first without knowing these articles you won't be able to have the basic idea as in what this case is all about this you know case this judgment i'm talking about this case so i'm not going to invoke those two articles generally i'll bring those relevant provisions of these two articles you know so to start with i'm making the background so that you can understand the judgment very easily you know first i will talk about article 15 you know article 15 clause 4 you read the bare act and you will find it the clause 4 of article 15 says that the state can bring you know reservation or the state can make provisions for the advancement of it talks about the advancement whose advance advancement advancement of three categories of citizens of we call it socially and educationally backward classes SEBCs one category SCs second category and STs third category so according to clause 4 of article 15 if the state is willing to make some provisions for the advancement of any of these categories the state can do that right means the advancement is possible through so many you know methods like the state can bring some health programs some housing programs and so many other ways are possible for that advancement of these three categories right but basically this article 15 clause 5 
talks about admission to the you know students or admission to these people now let's talk about clause 5 so clause 4 of article 15 says that the state can make provisions for the advancement of these three categories and now clause 5 of the same article that is article 15 says that admission may be given admission admission state can make provisions for the admission of these three categories in government institutes in private institutes whether those private institutes are added or unaided by the government but this clause is excluding one thing that is minority institutes you know instituted or constituted under uh, article 30 clause 1 means in those institutions you know this reservation is not going to work so what is the connection between clause 4 and clause 5 clause 4 is a general provision enabling provision which enables the state to make provisions for the advancement advancement of these three categories so taking that in view the state enacted the clause 5 and this you know method this method of admission was you know enacted for the advancement of these three categories so you have to memorize as in what are those categories which are going to be beneficiaries under these clauses so these three categories are going to be benefited from this policy this you know provision of the state but what is this clause number 6 clause 6 clause 6 was added by 103rd amendment and this provision talks about ews and this ews stands for economically weaker sections of citizens so this clause which was introduced by 103rd amendment and this ews was granted a reservation of up to 10% of each category of each category and this clause again says that this reservation will be in addition to the existing categories means ews is going to form a separate class because already we have three classes sc bcs sts and scs so these three categories are already in the picture but this category ews is a new category it is a new class and 10% means up to 10% reservation will be granted to this special category of citizens means economically weaker sections you know so this article 15 clause 6 talks about admission so this admission should be there in your mind you know admission means now under article 15 clause 6 we are talking about what admission so if the ews candidate is going to take the admission in any institute means the government institute or in any private institute also whether that institute is added or unaided by the government except the minority institutions he will be benefited or she will be benefited so this clause 6 of article 15 is going to help ews candidates in taking admissions in different institutions I have this basic idea similarly we have article you know 16 article 16 article 16 so article 16 generally talks about public employment reservation or affirmative action in the public employment public 
employment means if the state is thinking that particular you know group of citizens are deprived in their representation in the public employment the state can make provisions for them so again i will bring the relevant provisions relevant clauses of this article in the same fashion as i did with article 15 right so again we are going to talk about clause 4 of this article so when you go through the language of this article clause article 16 clause 4 you will find that the state is having this you know ability this is also an enabling provision because we know that reservation is not a matter of right it is just the policy of the state you can't you know ask for reservation as a matter of your right it is not your right at all it is the prerogative of the state if the state is willing to give you the reservation the state will give you otherwise if the state is not willing to give the reservation to you the state can completely deny it to you you can't do anything right so clause 4 of article 16 says that if the state is willing to make provisions for any backward class so the expression under this clause 4 is any backward class any backward class so this any backward class includes what scbcs plus scs plus sts automatically because any backward class will will include these three categories there is no doubt about it but what after that means article 16 is going to talk about the reservation to those people who are belonging to these three categories and they are going to get benefit in the public employment in government jobs basically similarly we have all uh, clause you know 6 and now again this clause 6 of article 16 was also inserted by 103rd amendment amendment and again this clause 6 on the same pattern gives the 10% reservation up to 10% reservation up to 10% reservation to ews in public employment <coughs> now we have the picture we have the background like these two clauses clause 6 of article 16 is talking about the public employment to ews and article 15 clause 6 is going to talk about the admission of ews candidates so admission plus employment these two issues are going to be dealt with under these two clauses respectively now we can understand that case let's come to that case what was the case janhit abhiyan versus union of india i'm writing it again janhit abhiyan versus union of india so people have challenged those two clauses means clause 6 of article 16 plus clause 6 of article 15 as well means the whole amendment means 103rd amendment 103 amendment of the constitution has been challenged means basically the issue is the constitutional validity of that amendment act of 2019 issue is the constitutional validity of the 103rd constitutional amendment act 2019 means this amendment had brought 
the EWS reservation under the constitution. So now people have challenged the constitutional validity of this act itself and now this matter was heard by the constitution bench of the Supreme Court. The matter was heard by heard by the constitution bench that is five judges of the supreme court and the verdict was you know divided and the majority was 3 is to 1 uh, 3 is to 2 sorry 3 is to 2 decision was given 3 is to 2 was the majority means three judges are giving their opinion on one side and two judges are giving their opinion and judgment on the other side you know so these three judges were if we want to take their names the first one is justice dinesh maheshwari justice Dinesh Maheshwari. Number two is Justice Bela M. Tripathi. And third is Justice Pardiwala. Justice Pardiwala. So they have given their you know respective judgments but the ultimate outcome of these three judgments is they have held the constitutional validity of the EWS reservation. According to them EWS is one category which is a separate category and if up to 10% reservation is being given to this EWS we can say that just because it is going to constitute a separate category this reservation is not violative of the equality code under article you know 14 15 and 6, 16 of the constitution means they are saying that this ews reservation is constitutionally valid because it is not violating the equality code under article 14 15 and 16 right this is the basic you know outcome let's come to the second part of this judgment that is the minority view what is that minority judgment minority was given by justice s ravindra bhatt justice s ravindra bhatt number 1 and number 2 cji U U Lalit. So Justice Rabindra Bhatt gave the minority judgment, and Justice U U Lalit concurred with that. You know, means he concurred with Mr. Bhatt, and Mr. Bhatt is saying that we have this ceiling of fifty percent, and that ceiling of fifteen percent is coming from Indra Sony judgment. You know, and we know that reservation of 50 percent maximum reservation of 50 percent was something which was pronounced in indra Sony judgment so these judges mr bhatt and you Lalit, they are you know thinking about that ceiling of 50 percent of total reservation you know and according to them this whole scheme of ews is going to encroach the equality fabric under the constitution of india right so they are striking it down and they are saying that economic basis means the sole economic basis for giving any reservation is not valid because backwardness is basically the social and educational backwardness and it is not the economic backwardness so they are sticking on that line and they are saying that if the economic criterion is being used it should be used for all the categories who, which are you know economically backward including these three categories means according to them if the aws you know provision is being brought 
into the picture this benefit should be given not only to those people who are outside the three categories that is sc bc sc and sts rather this benefit should be given to those people who are already belonging to those three categories means ews should be a part of sc bc ews should be a part of these you know sc people and ews should be a part of that st category also means according to them if the economy is going to be the sole ground the benefit of this economic backwardness should be given to those three categories as well means economic backwardness if at all is going to the to be the basis for any state affirmative action so in that case the state should not be exclusive towards the you know towards those people who are not belonging to those three categories rather the state should be inclusive so on that ground they have struck it down but the majority is 3 is to 2 so the reservation to ews category people in admission as well as in employment is surviving by this judgment it was held to be constitutionally valid so this judgment was all about this and i am sure that you are going to like this video and if you really like it please press the like button please don't forget to subscribe and share the video content what is available on our youtube channel and i'm sure that you will enjoy this video and you will go through upcoming videos which are lined up and once you subscribe our channel you will come to know about what are the other vi other videos which are coming for you so uh, stay tuned with us stay with st peters get all those benefits and stay healthy wealthy and wise also thank you so much